Irix has just announced another lens for their Cine line, and this time they're coming in with a 21mm, which is really exciting for two reasons. Stay tuned to find out why. So Irix is back at it again, giving us the amazing new addition to their already fabulous lineup. And let me tell you, this one's a banger. So let's break down this review into two parts. First, I'll share my thoughts about the lens, and then I'll tell you why this is a bigger deal than it seems. Whether you're just getting started or you're a seasoned veteran, the idea of affordable cine lenses is always an attractive offering. You get the best of both worlds, cine quality without breaking the bank. Irix has already been one of the main forces pushing this industry into that dream. So for all their lenses, they've developed superior glass at an astonishing price. But there is more to a lens today than is it sharp and how much does it cost? The market today is so competitive, so people are looking for a way to stand out. From build quality to performance, standardization between lenses, to even the look of it. And I'm being honest, Irix ticks all of my boxes. So let's talk for a second why Irix ticks all of those boxes. So let's start from build quality. You get a surprisingly rugged lens that's built like a tank. The solid metal construction give confidence to longevity and the quality of the glass. You also have industry standard gears for both aperture and focus, and another great feature is that all these rings actually line up in the same place, so switching up lenses in the middle of a set is really easy. And can I talk about it again? I'm gonna talk about it again. The beautiful, beautiful lens cap that's friction fitted and it fits super snug. I can't emphasize how important it was to change and you just gotta love that about Irix, that they heard it, they changed it. The lens comes with a lens foot that can be mounted to either the top or the bottom and it gives you support for your rig, especially when you're not using a native PL lens. This will prevent wiggling when you pull focus. Lastly, on the build quality, and this one's kind of an interesting one to me, I was kind of surprised to see that the 21 millimeter doesn't have a removable hood like the 15 and the 30. And it also has a protruding element, which seemed also weird because the 15 doesn't have one. It adds a little bit of heft to it since it's longer and heavier than the 15 and the 30 millimeter. But I guess this brings us straight into what most people care about, the performance. All that glass and heft has to be for a good reason. And from what I can tell, it was a really good reason. This lens is fantastic. I had a great time shooting with it because it really has almost no distortion. That wide field of view without looking like a wide field of view makes things seem bigger. It's kind of like a wide portrait lens, if you will. Anyways, sharpness is on point, not overly sharp, which I think is more important in wide lenses. The picture has a tendency to look like it was shot on a phone sometimes when it's too sharp. Micro contrast, however, is on point. The look and feel of this lens is great. Obviously, a little harder than most lenses to get that bokeh, but when you do, there's something surreal about it. It's creamy, it's smooth, and consistent. Also, surprisingly circular. It has negligible vignetting, which clears up almost entirely by f2 to about 2.8. So how about that flare? Here's where I started understanding the point of the hood. Wide open, the lens has a uh, really interesting flare. I personally love it, but the name of the game in cinema is usually control. Now don't get me wrong, it's not unusable. You can definitely see that it controls it really well. But a couple of things to take into account here. One, that lens hood doesn't come off. And two, at the end of the day, it's a wide lens. Avoiding flares can be harder than it seems. A flexible French flag on your camera or a flag can only take you so far in certain situations. I don't want it to come off as the flare is bad. It's not, it's actually kind of cool. Dare I say, a little retro looking, which is awesome, but it's something to take into account when you reach out for the lens. This will mainly become apparent when trying to mount NDs. You'll need a pretty snug fit and deep map box. Although the lens is threaded, for some reason, the lens is convex, making the lens thread irrelevant. Lastly, color. The color of the lens is outstanding, following in the same color profile and look as all the other lenses in the lineup. So that's it. The Irix 21 Cine, a beautiful, affordable lens coming out soon, but wait a second, hold on, hold on, hold on. What about the second thing we talked about at the beginning? So, and again, this is based purely on speculation, but bear with me. The 21 millimeter marks an important milestone for Irix with regard to their lens set. As of today, Irix now has an 11, 15, 21, 30, 45, and 150 mil. I think it's safe to say that the next lens is going to start closing the gap between 45 and 150, and I'm so excited to see them do it. 
Let us know in the comments below which lens you think they'll make next, or tell us what lens you think they should make next. So that about wraps us up. You can get the 21 millimeter today for, and actually this is an interesting one, but before all the lens mounts were 1095 and the PL mount was 1195 for some reason on B&H it's backwards. So run and get it until they figure it out. So that's all we have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave us a like or a comment and consider subscribing to our channel for some more awesome news and reviews. For now, I'm Adam Frimmer from DIYphotography.net and I'll be seeing you in the next video. <laughs>